Hey, welcome. Today in the shop, we got a 13 Honda Fit with a pretty interesting misfire diagnosis. So, why this thing's in here today? Because it has a check engine light, a what seems to be a dead misfire, but it also has quite an interesting backstory, and that kind of comes with a box of parts here. And it looks like we have a PCM, uh, complete wiring harness, we got some oxygen sensors, it looks like all four fuel injectors have also been replaced here. So before we get too involved in this box of parts, we kind of just want to go through our own diagnostic process here. We don't want to kind of get too caught up, even though it's good to know what was done before. We want to kind of start from scratch before we get too carried away in what was done before. So the first thing I want to do is let's just get codes out of here and see what we got in here. And this is what we found. We have a cylinder three misfire, a cylinder four misfire, a number three injector circuit malfunction, and an oxygen sensor code. It looks like there's a couple other uh, codes that were stored in temporary and some other things down here, but what I'm really worried about is the misfire codes. Now, before we get too deep in the misfire codes, let's make sure that the problem is actually there and let's kind of figure out what cylinders are misfiring. So let's build the car here. I'm gonna pull the scan tool up here. And I just want to see if we can get some misfire data and see if we can find out which cylinders are misfiring. Okay, and I'm going to go to the custom data pit. I like to just pick what I want to see. It makes the scan to refresh a lot faster. Okay, we're going here. Deselect all these. And I just want cylinder one, two, three, and four here. All right, let's fire it up and see what we got. Okay, so we can already see that it looks like cylinder three is a dead misfire, but it doesn't look like four is misfiring. It looks like cylinder three is our only misfire here. Okay, so before we go down the rabbit hole of just figuring out what cylinder three's problem is with that injector and that misfire, we wanna do something that we do on every misfire, and that's just check relative compression quick. Because if we have a mechanical issue with this engine, then none of that other stuff really matters. So this is what we do on every misfire problem. We're gonna quick just check to make sure that we're good mechanically. So I'm gonna take my amp clamp here, I'm gonna hook this up. And this car's got a really nice ground cable here. We can just grab this quick. We ready to open up our Pico software here. And make sure you tell the Pico software that you're using that amp clamp. We're in 200 mode. We're gonna go the full plus and minus 200. And I like to grab a lot of time when I do these relative compression tests. So we're gonna to go to one second per division. And this is what I like to do on relative compression tests. Everyone does something different. I like to set a trigger. Then I don't have to start and stop it. Just put that just on, just enough to start it. And remember, before we do this relative compression test, we have to disable something on the motor, otherwise it's gonna start and we won't get a reading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the injector fuse and I'll show you that on a diagram in a little bit. Well, it sounded pretty good. Let's see what we got. So looking at our pattern here, it looks pretty good. And there's a few that are a little higher than the others, but that relatively looks good for compression. Um, I think this is enough to say that we can go after our injector problem now. I'm pretty safe to say, I mean, this doesn't rule out everything. There could still be a mechanical issue, but it's enough for us to see if we can find what that injector circuit problem is. So before I go touching any of this stuff under here, I don't want to disturb the wiring harness. I don't want to accidentally fix this thing. I want to go back to that injector fuse and I'll show you which one I pulled here. Let me pull up a diagram. See this fuse 39 is the one I pulled to the relative compression test. I want to do an amperage test there just to kind of get a feel for what kind of amperage all the injectors are pulling and see if number three is pulling any amperage, if the PCM is trying to do anything with it. And that's when I do this before I disturb the rest of the circuit. But before that, I'm going to change my amp clamp to a little bit smaller of an amp clamp because we want a little more detail here. We're not going to be pulling what the starter is pulling for amperage. So we'll get this one out of the way here. Plug that in and go back to our picoscope here. 
And make sure that you change this on uh, Pico as well. You gotta let it know that you're putting a different amp clamp on. This is a 30 amp clamp that we're using. I'm gonna bring this down to plus or minus 10. And I'm still gonna use a trigger here. I'm just gonna drop it down just a little bit and I'm gonna take a little less time here. Okay, let's get this hooked up. Let's see what we got. Now this looks a little messy, but once we zoom in and clean it up, you'll be able to see it a lot better. So we'll grab our magnifying glass here, just grab a section of it. I like to just throw a filter on here so I can see it. And yeah, that really tells a story here. So if you look at this, you can see that we have three humps, but this is a four cylinder and you can see that we're missing that fourth injector. It doesn't look like it's pulling anything. Yep, so we got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that kind of just shows that we definitely don't have that injector firing. So we have to get more into this wiring of this injector. Now we're gonna switch back to the diagram quick here. And the first thing I wanna do, let's make sure this thing has power, right? So we had that fuse out. We know that power must be getting to one, two, and four because they're firing, but we still could have a problem between this splice and cylinder number one, or cylinder number three's injector pin one here. So let's get to that. And I'm just gonna use a test light for this. So we'll hook up our test light here. Let's go to ground. And again, make sure you have the key on so you will not have power there. So we'll just flip the key on quick. And these can be kind of a pain to unplug. Um, just gotta get your fingers in there and see if I can release it here. Oh, there we go. And I remember from our diagram before, that's just gonna be the yellow wire. See if we can find that one here. Okay, there's our yellow wire. And there we go. We can confirm that we have power at the injector. So now we know that's good. Let's just switch back to our diagram here. Let's see if I can get a pencil out here. Okay, so we know we have power here on the uh, number three injector, but we have to make sure that we're getting a trigger from the PCM, because if that injector is open, we're not gonna get a trigger and we're gonna have that amperage reading that we had on our, our lab scope before. So I'm just gonna grab some Noid lights here and we're gonna hook these up and see if we get a trigger or not. So we'll find one here that'll work. And a test light will work for this too if you don't have Noid lights, you don't have to have a Noid light set. We'll hook this up and let's start it up, see what we got. Okay, you can definitely see here that our injector is not being fired or this thing would be lighting up. Now, I always like to check a no one good cylinder when I do this just to make sure that my setup is working and the Noid light is good. So I'm just gonna unplug number two here. You can hear this thing running pretty bad. It's only running on two cylinders. But there I go. Now you can see that this cylinder is actually firing the injector. So now we know we have a trigger problem with this car. We know that the PCM is not triggering the injector, but before we blame the PCM, we have to check this wire. We have to make sure that this wire is, is good from the, uh, the injector to the PCM. And I don't wanna do a normal resistance test here because continuity doesn't mean that that circuit can carry current. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this contraption of wire here and it does look a little confusing, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run that circuit in line with a bulb and make sure I can light the bulb and that will tell me that the current or the circuit I should say is capable of running the current it needs for this injector. So we're gonna hook up to here. Remember, it's gonna be the blue wire. That's going to my bulb. And I'm gonna put this one to power. Now I have to find the other side of this circuit, which is gonna be on the PCM. So let's look back at our wiring here and you can see it's C7. So we'll disconnect the PCM and find that circuit. And this can be a little hard to get to. I had to take the bolts out so I can get the PCM a little bit free. We'll get this disconnected here. We're gonna put this one to ground. 
little count here. And you can see there our bulb is lit up. This proves that the circuit is capable of carrying the current it needs for that injector. So we know that our PCM has failed on this thing. The problem is we already have a PCM in it. So I don't want to just throw another PCM in this car. We got to check that injector, right? Because if that injector is shorted, it could be what's taking out that PCM. And the easiest way to do that is we're going to just do a resistance test on here and see what we get. But first we need a spec. So let's look on our service information here. And we have this pulled up and it looks like we're supposed to have about 10 to 13 ohms resistance. So I'm going to be looking for that, but I also want to take a reading of some of the other injectors and just see for comparison measures and just see how what they're at too. So let's get this out of the way. And we'll grab our, oops, still connected the battery here. And we'll grab our trusty multimeter and we'll set that to ohms. Make sure you guys can all see that there. Okay. Now this is going to be kind of hard to get these pins in here. I'm actually going to use a pliers to try to reach them back there. And I always like to check a known good first. So we already got number two on plug. So I think that's going to be the winner here. And just bear with me here once. I'm going to have to try to get these plugged in. Okay, so I don't think I'm quite on there. Okay, so you can see that this one is 10.7 ohms. And if we look back to our spec, our spec is 10 to 13. So I would say this one is good, but this is cylinder number two. And we know cylinder number two was firing correctly. So let's check our bad injector and see what we got here. Should be a professional at this by now. Get that in there. Okay. Two point three ohms. Yeah, so this injector is definitely shorted. Now, it's a good thing we checked it because we already had a PCM in here. If we would have put another PCM without checking that, we could have roasted another PCM. And I'm not really sure what happened to this PCM. Maybe it was replaced uh, after the injectors were replaced or something like that, but it really doesn't matter. This is why we go through the same diagnostic process with everything. So we, we made sure that we had good relative compression. Then we made sure we had good wiring and we know that the wiring, the relative compression is good. So we know we have a bad PCM. We know we have a bad injector. We'll probably end up putting probably an entire set of injectors in here. I don't want to take the risk of any of those other injectors failing and then causing another PCM to fail. But once we get an injector in here and a new PCM, this thing should be ready to go. Thanks for sticking with us through this video. Um, I'm glad that you did. Um, if you liked what you've seen, subscribe, click that bell icon if you want to get notified when we make uh, another video. And as always, thanks for watching.